Good morning, everyone. This is Ben Dunn, founder of Antarctic Press, a comic book publishing company founded in 1985. Creators of such comics as Ninja High School, Marvel Mangaverse, Tomorrow Girl, and a host of others. So, uh... Uh, yesterday, I did a little bit of a rant. Sorry about that if you found that a little bit off-putting. But, hey, I'm very passionate about the comic industry I am. And I don't want to stand idly by while it sits dying. You know, if you could have the power to cure something and you didn't do anything to help a dying patient, how would you feel about that? You know, you hold in your power the ability to save someone, and yet you do nothing. This is how I feel about the comic industry right now. You know, the the people in power are doing nothing to save the industry. I don't stand idly by and say that lightly. You know. That's a pretty bold accusation. You know, it's Ben, you better back that up. Well, just look at the results. Let me ask you a few questions. See if uh, you can answer them honestly, you know, and see if, if I'm correct or incorrect in my assessment of the way things are going. Yes, the economy is not very good. But you know what? Comic industry has suffered economic downturns before. You think the last hundred years we didn't have economic downturns? You know, I've seen economic downturns. You know, I've seen inflation. I've seen things during the seventies. You think this is bad? During the seventies, it was worse. Comics went from twelve cents in nineteen sixty nine. All the way to nearly a dollar in 1980. Just a span of 11 years. You know, that's a huge increase from a 12 cent comic to nearly a dollar comic. Now, you know, comics haven't gotten that bad. That'd be almost the equivalent of saying the comic started at, uh, you know, a dollar 99 or 299 in uh, 2014, you know, and went all the way to like $11 in 2024. You know, my math could be off, but that's not nearly as bad as the inflation that was during the 70s. So in some ways, comics are still a pretty good value for your, your entertainment buck. You know, and the problem is, is not uh, really the cost of comics. So people are always complaining about the cost of comics. Oh, comics are too expensive. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Publishers. Well, probably they are expensive. But you know what? That can't be helped. There are forces in publishing that are beyond our control. When paper prices go up, printing prices go up. When labor costs go up, Print, uh, publishing prices go up. You know, when things go up, you think they're going to eat the cost? No, they're going to pass it on to you. So what we as a publisher are forced to do? Well, we have to either raise the prices or operate at a loss. And anybody can tell you when you're in a business, you operate at a loss, you are not long for this world. Simple, simple fact of the matter is math is math. When you lose money, you're going to go out of business. So publishers do everything they can to stay in business. If it means raising prices, well, then so be it. You know, hopefully the content will still be worth the price of admission. See, that's a problem. Content's not worth the price of admission. At least for the most part. At least through the mainstream. I mean, it's quite evident. If content was amazing... You think people care about how much it costs? People want to be entertained. I mean, look at the movie. Movies and comics are very much in parallel with each other. 
You know, we have they have movie theaters. We have comic stores. You know, they have movies. We make comics. Both entertain masses of people. The thing about movies is, though, movies takes a long time to make. From the idea all the way to the end product. Comics don't have that burden. See, that's the one thing that comics have that no other entertainment media has is the ability to adapt, to pivot, to change, to focus with very little effort. You know, it, all it is is our imagination, our imagination. We as creators, in the, especially in comics, have that ability to create from whole cloth, you know, an entire story. You know, with very little time, very little effort, you know, and it, and we can put it out very quickly. We can glom on to a new trend. We can f do comics on the fly so quickly that it makes your head spin. You know, the computer industry would love to be able to have the ability that comics have, but it doesn't work that way. Comics is a, is a movies our vast consortium of many different fathers, many different creators, many different money men. You know, there's they're all vying for a piece of that movie pie because it's big business. You know, the thing about the only advantage that movies have, that video games have, you know, is the the reach and the return on investment. But you know what? Even movies and video games can fail because of their content you know and their failure can be more spectacular oh if a comic fails what a couple thousand dollars are lost eh, you know the parking valet bill at a movie studio is probably more money than that you know so when, when comics fail it's not the end of the industry you know, we just move on to the next thing. Because we have that advantage. We need to take advantage of that advantage. You know, comics have the ability to really reach a lot of people. If we can get our act together, we can find a way to get out, to reach out to people that say, hey, comics still are a big value for your entertainment buck. You know, in, yeah, okay. The average comic is five dollars, but what is five dollars these days? What to find? Tell me, let me ask you honestly: What does five dollar really buy you these days? You know, five dollars is the one dollar ten years ago. And if the if the five dollars is one dollar ten years ago, then you're really buying a comic for a dollar. I mean, you think about it. Plus, you get to keep the comic. You know, you, I, if you're buying comics for investment, at least there's a possibility that comic will have a return on your investment. And you'll get your not only your money back, but you'll make profit. You know, if it turns out that the particular comic you bought, you bought wisely, it turns out to be a huge hit. It turns out to be the next big Harry Potter. It turns out to be the next Star Wars. It turns out to be the next Superman. The next Batman. You know? When Hollywood comes calling, you know, to an indie comic, you know, people you suddenly realize, whoa, wow, I did not see that coming. Luckily, I bought that comic when it first came out. So I may have a very valuable comic on my hand because I wisely spent my $5 or whatever on this comic. Now, I'm not saying every comic is a sure hit. No, don't get me wrong. You know, but the thing about it is that we need to understand as a, uh, as a collective, you know, art form, the reach and power that we actually have. You know, we've always, we've always poo-pooed comics as being, uh, that's kid stuff. You know, nobody cares about it. No, comics can make money. 
There's lots of examples of comics making money. You know, but you notice the one factor for every successful comic is content. It's all about the content. Everything in entertainment is about content, content, content. It's just like a restaurant. Location, location, location. You know, the thing about it is that, you know, we spend way too much time at each other's throats instead of spending time creating things. It's, it befuddles me that some of my fellow professionals would rather spend time, hours, days, on feuds, you know, trying to belittle one another, trying to create drama, wasting time on things that are not important or necessary. You know, if, if all that energy that was spent, you know, complaining, whining, being a little titty baby, you know, uh, trying to get in each other's business was spent creating actual great comics for people to want to read, I, there's no limit how far the comic book market could reach. You know, maybe we would actually see more comic stores open and close. You know, for the most part, comics are supposed to thrive when the economy actually does badly. Because it's one of the few entertainment medias where it's cheap. Relatively speaking, comics are still pretty cheap. It's a good value. You know, we need to let people understand that. That going to a comic book store, you know, not only, you know, if you bring your family along, you know, not only will it connect with kids. Kids, I believe, if they're exposed to comics, they'll find a comic they want to read. I guarantee it. You let a kid in a comic book store, you give them, you know, $10, $20, dollars says, go pick a comic out. They're not going to walk away empty-handed. I promise you that. They, I guarantee that a kid in a comic store, you give them 20 bucks. And what's 20 bucks? You know, they will walk out with a comic. You know what they're going to do with that? They're going to read it. And they may fall in love with it. And they may be future comic readers. I'm not saying they'll become a collectors or speculators or hobbyists. You know, that's for the hardcore. You know, but as a casual comic reader, maybe they'll get into the habit of just, you know, oh man, I remember reading this comic. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I remember going with my dad, with my mom, every week to the comic store. You know, we make a trip of it. We laugh, we talk, maybe we go get ice cream afterwards. We would read our comics, spend hours looking over the pictures, reading the story, talking about the characters. You see, this is this is the the beauty of comic books as an art form. You know? You could go back and forth, read it, share it, you know, spend time with it. You know, you don't have to be burdened by, oh, is there Wi Fi nearby? You know? Worry about having to go through a website, you know. The thing about it is that once you buy a comic book, it's yours to own forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, and that's the one advantage that comics have over everything else. It's the physicality of it all. You know, and as long as people still want to own physical things, comics always have that advantage. So we need to take advantage of that advantage. I, I honestly believe that if we, as an industry, can work together, you know, to make people aware that comics not only do exist. I mean, they, people know they exist. It's the reach that's the problem, you know. Would, would distributors start gatekeeping and doing only exclusives instead of trying to expand the market? That's where the problem lies, you know. It seems to me that there's there's forces out there who are actively trying to destroy the comic industry. You know, I'm probably paranoid. Says, Man, that's just that's crazy talk. Well, am I crazy? Maybe. But you know what? We all have to be a little crazy to even work in comics. You know, because why would we want to work in comics? Comics.
economics is hard work for very little return if you don't have the right product. It's a, it's a big risk. But the reward is so satisfying. You know, to see your comic come to life, it's just there's no other feeling in the world. You created this world with a piece of paper and a pen. You, know? you created this story, these characters. Those are yours. Yours to own forever. Yours to exploit forever. You know, until... Maybe Hollywood comes to call and says, oh, we like this comic. We'll pay you, you know, a truckload of money for it. You know, then you could sit back, maybe retire. Who knows? You know, I would love to see that happen to creators. This would fill me with great joy because it shows that comics are legitimate and have always been legitimate. He said, for some reason, we, as a comic community, seem to actually go against our own self-interests at times, you know, and it befuddles me why anyone would do that. Why, why would we, why would we disparage and, you know, destroy, belittle our own industry while we're working in it? You know, I, I choose to elevate the comic industry because, you know what, I love it. I love comics as a medium. You know, I love comics as an art form. I love comic creators because, you know, comic creators, you know, are some of the best people in the world, but they also can be some of the most toxic. Are you a toxic creator? You know, I hope not. But, you know, people are people. It is what it is. I do everything I can to try to, you know, detoxify whatever I, whatever I, where I can. You know, try to build bridges instead of burning them. Try to reach out to do something positive. You know, Antarctic Press has tried many things to try to encourage, you know, of course, the awareness. But for some reason, people just don't take us seriously. You know, we're just a little comic book publisher. They do that. They do a little niche part. You know, sometimes big is not always better. You know, it's sometimes small. And intimate is more personal. Like, we started a new ad program to people, to comic book store owners who have brick and mortar stores who may be uh, having a little trouble uh, getting outreach. We offer them free ad space in our comics. You know, we don't, I don't know how effective that'll be, but at least we're trying. You know, we're talking about your brick and mortar store. Advertised in a comic book. You know, maybe people will see that an Antarctic Press comic, see that comic book story, and says, hey, that story's in my local area. You know, I want to go see that store. And, and maybe it'll bring a one customer or two. You know, and it's an absolutely free program to comic store owners who have brick and mortar stores. So, you know, we try as many things as possible. Now, you know, we're not a wealthy company. You know, if we had the resources of Marvel and DC, there's so many things I would implement, so many things I would do. You know, back in the 80s, Marvel gave a shit. You know, there was a, uh, there was a, a lady that worked there who was in charge of direct market sales at Marvel. I forget her name. I'm sorry. I'm a boomer. You know, well... Uh, but I do remember what she did. She implemented a program where Marvel bought comic book store owners' cash registers. You know, before that, comic book store owners would just use like a pad or a piece of paper and they would just write down their sales. You know, and or just don't even bother. You know, she implemented a cash register program that allowed comic book stores owners to get free cash registers for Marvel because they Marvel wanted to track their sales, you know, wanted to see how well they were doing, and make comic book stores owners legitimate businesses, you know, that would help increase sales of comics. You know, I mean, back then when Marvel gave a shit, you know, 
there was a sort of symbiotic relationship between comic book store owners and Marvel and DC. You know, DC not so so much, but Marvel especially. You know, when you know when 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 Marvel was bought out by corporation interests and things like that. That's when they began to lose that symbiotic relationship, you know. And comic books, they, they just drifted further and further away, you know, where that very special relationship they used to have. I don't know if they can win it back or not, you know, because it may be too late. You know, who knows? You know, I always like to believe it's never too late to repair things, you know, especially relationships. There's still a chance. Oh, if if Marvel were just to listen to the concerns of comic retailers, you know what? We we listen to our retailers if they have a complaint. If there's something that we can do to help, it is within our power and means. We will we will do everything we can. You know, we try to do point of sales, but after talking to comic retailers, you know that's doesn't seem very effective or co very cost effective, so we didn't do it. You know? Because we listen to the comic book store owners. We, 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 I, I sometimes do surveys, you know, on my uh, Facebook page and asking comic book dealers, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? You know, should we do this? Should we do that? You know, and I will get feedback on that and say, okay, we'll try to do this and see if that works. We'll try to do that and see if that works. You know, but at least we're trying. You know, I mean, we we as publishers realize that for us to survive, comic book stores have to survive. The comic industry has to survive. You know, we need to help each other out. Instead of trying to be antagonistic toward each other, we need to try to help each other. You know, we try. You know, we try to live day to day. You know, and to survive, but. I don't want to merely survive. I want to thrive. You know, I want our industry to be so powerful, so big, so influential that people will take notice and comic creators can make a decent living drawing comics. You know, I mean, why do we have to live, you know, hand to mouth, you know? It 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 when we can be a huge industry. I mean, in almost every other country that has a comic industry, it's thriving. Japanese manga, European comics, you know. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but my understanding is that they're doing not too badly. I mean, I could be wrong. Correct me if I am, you know. Why is it the American comic industry is the one you know, that seems to be self-loathing, down, you know, if, if uh, you know, self-deprecating, it, it just makes no sense to me. It's the, uh, oh, whoa, it's me. We've lost the war. I mean, come on, fellas. Let's buck it up. Pull up our bootstraps. Get over that hill. You know, we'll fight toward victory. And what is victory? Well, victory is not merely to survive, but to thrive. Thrive is what we need to do, not just survive. You know, people talk about, oh, is you survive? You know, I named this channel Surviving Comics because comics is very cutthroat, you know, and it can be very, very, uh, can be very discouraging and disparage, disparaging, you know, it, could, it, it can be, you know, but I want you to survive. So I'm trying to give little tiny, little nuggets of wisdom from experience from my last 40, almost 40 years, up for myself, 40 plus years in the industry, you know, and let you know what my experiences have been. You know, you think this is the first time comic books have had a downturn? You think this is the first time that publishers have gone out of business? You think this is the first time that creators have attacked each other, been at each other's throat? No. This has been going on time immemorial. And but the thing about it is that there was sort of an unwritten rule that we wanted the comics industry to thrive. Now it seems like no one gives a damn, you know, especially in the mainstream. 
it, it's almost like they're on a path to self-destruction and they don't care. Yeah. I mean, just see, just merely reading from other people their thoughts on the product that Marvel and DC are outputting fills me with great sadness. You know, that these once great American comic book companies have been reduced to a shell of its former self because of whatever agenda they're pushing. You know, and instead of trying to serve the customer, they're serving themselves and, and be damned the customer. You know, and if the customer complains, what do they do? They send out the attack dogs and make it worse by, by disparaging the customer. How is that helpful in any way? How is that going to help the comic industry? It doesn't. You know, they may feel, uh, you know, superior or magnanimous or, or or whatever, you know, they're trying to achieve, you know, but it only makes things worse. You know, m my brother, who is the publisher of Antarctic Press has a very strict policy at Antarctic Press. Keep your mouth shut. You, know, you may disagree with things that are happening in, in the industry. You may want to vent you know, about things against other people. You know, but you never disparage the customer. Never, ever, ever tell the customer they're wrong. Always listen to them. Always hear what they have to say. Because you know what? If the customer is complaining, that means they care. They care enough to let it be known that we're doing something wrong. You know, And we should listen to them. We should say, wow. They care enough about Antarctic Press Comics to tell us you know, that we're doing something that may be detrimental to the health of our company. And we should listen to that. We should look at it and say, hmm, maybe we should consider this. Maybe we should uh, hear them out and see what they have to say. They say, oh yeah, you're, you're just a racist. You're a misogynist. You're, you're whatever label they choose to smack onto their customer. Their customer, for God's sake. What is that? When did we go from the customer is always right to the customer is always wrong? It, it's, it's, you know, it's really, it's really sad. It really is. So anyway, that's enough rambling for today from this, uh, this boomer. So uh, just want to let you know that I love all you millennials and baby boomers and Gen Zs and, uh, you know, Generation X people, whoever buys our comics, you know, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I hope you'll continue to support Antarctic Press Title and your local comic store. You know, the, your local comic store is a business, you know, that is trying to make people happy, you know, and it would be great if you went and supported them, you know. So until next time, this is Ben Dunn signing off. <laughs>